CD Projekt Red were at one point one of the most respected video game developers, but after the disappointing launch of Cyberpunk 2077, their reputation took a nosedive. However, I'm sure you've heard that story at least a thousand times now, so I'll spare you the details, especially considering that a lot of them are no longer relevant. As with the release of the Phantom Liberty expansion and 2.0 update, the definitive version of the game is finally here, and after playing the update and finishing the new content, I can safely say that it does deliver. And in my opinion, the story and location present in Phantom Liberty are both leagues above the ones featured in the original game, which were already top-notch. I won't get into any spoilers, but do expect a lot of twists and turns as is standard for the spy thriller genre, and more importantly, incredibly impactful choices that will really make you think especially when your decisions will directly impact the characters you've grown to love, with exceptional performances from actors such as Idris Elba and the returning Keanu Reeves. Each and every character feels developed and perfectly brought to life by the members of the cast. And while it is bittersweet to wave goodbye to the cyberpunk universe until the release of the sequel, I really couldn't have hoped for a better send-off to my favourite game of all time. CDPR wasn't the only studio to experience a comeback. It was nearly eight years since their previous single player RPG, and nearly five since the disappointment that was Fallout 76. Bethesda has returned with their first new franchise in over 25 years, and although the discourse online has been all over the place, I really enjoyed it. It definitely gets off to a slow start and doesn't really have that wow moment that's present in Skyrim when you see Bleak Fool's Barrow, or Fallout 3 with the Washington Monument off in the distance. No, Starfield doesn't have that, but for good reason, as it does a great job of easing you into its systems rather than overwhelming you with text and tutorials as soon as you start the game. It doesn't hold your hand, and it's all the best because of it. Like many others, I was initially disappointed by the disjointed nature of the space travel, but eventually I did grow to appreciate it. As impressive as it would be to fly between planets or land on them manually, I can imagine it would eventually become annoying. Whereas with this system, it did actually grow on me. And you can still do just about everything that would have been interesting about flying in space in the surrounding areas of planets, satellites, and space stations. Whether that's trading with allied ships, getting into dogfights, or even becoming a pirate. Now let me tell you, when you successfully fend off an entire fleet of enemy ships, then dock to the final one and take it for your own, the rush is like nothing I've ever felt in a video game. It does take a while to learn the systems, but once you do, you can really make the galaxy your playground. And that freedom to do whatever you like is perfectly representative of Starfield as an experience. And I'm happy to report that it did meet every single one of my expectations. RE4 Remake separate ways DLC was thought to be a while away, but as it turns out that could not have been further from the truth, ultimately being announced and released within the space of a week. Despite its relatively short runtime of 4 hours, at a price of just $10 it's a difficult offer to refuse if you're a fan of Resident Evil, especially when considering its 95% positive reviews on Steam. Ever since its announcement at the end of last year, Payday 3 has been one of the most anticipated titles of 2023. However, it's safe to say that its launch earlier this month has not gone to plan, with inconsistent servers for multiple days after release, and mostly negative reviews on Steam. Although, on the occasions when the game has been playable, people seem to be enjoying it. Following in the footsteps of games such as Gang Beasts and Fall Guys, Party Animals is a physics-based arcade-style fighting game where you play as a bunch of fluffy creatures. Reactions have been pretty positive and we've had a lot of fun playing it with friends. However, there have been some complaints about its inability to be played offline. The reboot of the Mortal Kombat franchise Mortal Kombat 1 finally released earlier this month, and it seems to be reviewing very well across all platforms. Well, almost, because currently the Switch version is an absolute mess, with not only poor graphics, but bugs and performance issues, all for the same price as the other versions of the game. Lies of P is the latest attempt at the Souls-like genre, but that doesn't mean that it's just another generic release, putting its own spin on the classic story of Pinocchio and introducing its own unique gameplay mechanics, all of which seem to have gone down well, receiving a Metacritic average of 82 and currently sitting at 86% positive reviews on Steam. Despite being called Counter-Strike 2, there are very few changes to gameplay in the sequel to CSGO, but for long-term fans, it seems to be exactly what they wanted, upgrading its technical state while maintaining the gameplay they know and love. October is shaping up to be another massive month for video game releases, even rivaling the gigantic titles of this month, with highly anticipated games such as Spider-Man 2, Assassin's Creed Mirage, Forza Motorsport, The Lords of the Fallen, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Ghost Runner 2, City Skylines 2, and Adam Wake 2, set to release in the spookiest month of the year. So please make sure to consider subscribing as we'll be covering some of these games over the next month.